Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this episode we'll be talking about my PC Engine Core graphics with my AV booster from Ultra Steve. What a difference that makes. I particularly love this system because I've got a Turbo EverDrive version 2.4 with lots of excellent games on it. But there is a problem and the problem is this controller. It's absolutely disgusting and I don't like a disgusting controller so we're going to give it a clean with some soap and water. Ew. So the pad is a fairly standard D-pad affair with select and run rubber buttons, two auto fire speed selection switches and two action buttons. Flipping it over we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five screws and they are cross headed so let's get the correct screwdriver and take it apart but before we do that let's get something to put the screws into so we don't knock them off the desk or the cat doesn't knock them off the desk let's take this apart the grit and the grime on the back of this controller tells a story of a well-loved system which is great news for the person who owned it before, but not so pleasant for me to play with, so that can go for a wash. Moving over to the controller internals itself, you have the usual multiplexers that you find in controllers of this vintage. And also I can spot something here that might be a bit of a problem, but it doesn't appear to have leaked, so I think we'll leave it there for the moment as it seems to be functioning normally. So this side of the board looks pretty clean. You can probably notice this shiny stuff, but that's not leakage, that's a resin that they used to use on electronics back in the day to protect parts of the circuit. Let's pull this cable out and have a look in the front of the controller where we're more likely to see all sorts of horrible bits of dust and muck. Well, looking inside, on first inspection it doesn't appear to be that dirty. But as soon as you look a bit closer you can see contaminants all over the conductive pads. Now I know I was having a bit of trouble with the run button and we can see there's a little bit stick or something on there so that probably wasn't helpful. This can all come out and be washed as well. Looking at the board itself it looks in pretty good shape. The conductive pads aren't showing any excessive wear and it doesn't appear that anything's ever been spilt on the controller. Again we can see that resin coating. I think I'll just give this a wipe over with some contact cleaner and leave it at that. Now it's time for a big hot steaming bowl of soapy water and we can drop all of these components in there, buttons, contacts, even the conductive pads, safe in the knowledge that they'll all be pretty safe. I don't use any kind of alcohol or thinners on the conductive pads because it can make them brittle and dry out. Scrub, scrub. Now let's take the parts out so we can put them to one side and change for clean water so we can give them a good rinse. The D-pad is looking infinitely better already, so much cleaner. With the rubbers and the conductive pads, I don't use the toothbrush, I tend to just use my fingers because they can be quite delicate and you don't want the conductive pads to come off. It can be difficult to see if you've got all the dirt until you actually rinse it off. Mm -hmm. 
and replacing the soapy water with a bowl of clean water ready to rinse all the items. And with all the items thoroughly rinsed, let's get rid of this bowl of water and start to dry off the components. We'll be popping some contact cleaner on this later, just to be safe. Well, it's getting late here at Mark Fix's Stuff Towers, and I don't know about you, but I'm tired. So, <sighs> night everybody. Good morning everybody. Let's put our controller back together. And if you look here, you can see these pads have come up fantastically well. Let's put this whole thing back together right now, as quick as possible. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, there's a bit of water still in there. I've got a technique for getting that out, which I like to call the slam dunk. Pow, pow, pow. And repeat until all the water's come out. Let's try it on the other button as well. Kapow, boom, boom, pow. You can see there's a little bit of residue still in there, which we can clean out with this handy cloth. There we go, dry as a desert gulch. It's really easy to reassemble this controller. None of the buttons do the usual, I'm gonna pop out thing. So having quickly put the rubbers back in, we can turn our attentions to the board. The board is in good shape, but we're gonna use some contact cleaner and we're gonna just give it a wipe over. I prefer to spray the contact cleaner onto a cloth. That way you don't get too much overspill. Although with this can, it tends to go everywhere anyway just like that. Just wiping over the relevant parts of the board as quick as possible. Not too much stuff's coming off, but it's good to know that we've actually cleaned it. We're also gonna put a drip onto each of the contacts of the speed selectors on the auto fire switches. Let's put the board back on. Don't worry too much if the rubbers aren't perfectly aligned. They'll push down as soon as you squash the board in. There we go, and that D-pad one's popped nicely in. This cabling is a bit difficult to get back in because it's quite thick and heavy and to route the cable through these two standoffs can be a bit of a tricky task. However, if you persevere, you'll get it back in. Just make sure that none of the wires are going to be trapped when you put the back of the case on. And with the back off, just turn it over and make sure that all the buttons are functioning as they should be. It's quite a tight fit so it's not falling off. Run, select, Good, the fire buttons, the selectors are working nicely and the D-pad feels good. Right, well in that case, let's turn it over and let's put this back together. When screwing, technique is really important. If you notice here, I'm backing up until the thread clicks together and then going straight into the original thread. I'll show that again because it's important, otherwise you could cut a new thread and you could weaken the molding. So into the slot, turn it backwards until it clicks and drops into the thread and then do it up. You'll find it's easier to put retro back together this way. So our controller is already looking fabulous, but I like to use something called Dash Shine, and you can get this from your local pound store. I spray it onto the cloth once again, and then I just apply it to the plastic of the retro. It's purely cosmetic, but what I find is if you put some on and then wipe it off, it gives it a really nice sheen. Another benefit with controllers is that because it's silicon based, it acts as a very mild lubricant, which can help with sticky buttons. This controller doesn't have sticky buttons, but if it did, maybe the dash shine would have helped. So shiny, I love it.
Well, after all this hard work, I think it's time to switch on the TV and see if it works. Yeah, I'm still rubbish. It wasn't the dirty pad. 